And I saw there was a guy on the ground who had been shot in the leg and screaming. Right now at 11, daytime gunfire in downtown Portland. Hear from one witness on how she believes it started. Also tonight. And all of a sudden the car will slam on the brakes like you're about to hit a brick wall, which is terrifying. KGW investigates so-called phantom braking that's left some Tesla drivers shaken up. Plus, bad look for the Blazers, the Sports Channel changeup that'll have some fans forced to pay up. And we begin at 11 with the aftermath of a deadly daytime shooting in the middle of downtown Portland. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. And when it was over, one man was dead, another injured, and witnesses we're scrambling to help. Our Catherine Cook talked with one woman who watched it all unfold. Catherine. David, she says it looks like this started as a case of road rage, and tonight police have one person in custody. This happened at a busy time in a busy part of downtown, and witnesses say it appears one of the victims was just a bystander. I held a man's hand as he died in downtown Portland. Alyssa Eisenstein Kruger is stunned after what she witnessed Wednesday afternoon. I don't even know what to say, what to think. Just after 4.30, police responded to gunfire at Southwest 10th and Alder. They found one man dead and another injured. Not long after that, they took someone into custody. It's traumatic, it's horrific. This woman says she witnessed both shootings and for that reason asked that we not identify her. She told police it looks like what happened started with road rage. She took this photo and says the suspect was pulled over in this black Mercedes. She says the victim pulled over too and walked up to the driver's side window. And I thought it was odd that he had jumped out of his car and left his car door open. And that's when the driver of the shooter lifted up the gun and he shot him. And he shot another gentleman on the sidewalk and then fired again the third time. And then he took off around the corner. The witness says it appeared the second victim had nothing to do with the incident. Alyssa saw that man first. I saw there was a guy on the ground who had been shot in the leg and screaming and people were trying to help him. Medics took him to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. All around, people called 911 and did what they could to help the first victim, including Alyssa. But in the end, it wasn't enough. I ran into Jake screaming as their doctor. It was taking forever for the emergency people to come. And then I just sat there and held his hand and he passed. At 4.30 on a Wednesday. Tonight, police are continuing their investigation. They're asking anyone with photos or video of what happened to share it with them. They haven't released the names of those involved. David. Yeah, it just takes your breath away. Thank you, Catherine. Appreciate that report tonight. Let's get you caught up on tonight's other headlines. The FBI and authorities in eastern Oregon are searching for a suspect in a homicide in Malheur County. Authorities say 24 year old Daniela Perez was found dead Tuesday inside her car in Ontario. Officials have released images, but not the name of the person they are looking for. They say he was last seen Tuesday around noon at the Love's Travel Stop off I-84 and then at the Oregon Natural Market in the evening. The FBI say they believe he is driving a silver Chevy car with Mexico plates. In Estacada, a high school student has been arrested after allegedly making a threat that forced the district to close all its schools. That teenager has now been charged with disorderly conduct. It is the fourth threat in recent weeks across four different districts in the metro area. Three of those investigations led to an arrest. And this is intriguing. Some viewer video from Washington shows what appears to be a small funnel cloud near the center. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino. Matt, how unusual is this? You know, we get these in the fall and in the spring sometimes, David. They're usually uh, short lived and this one was on the ground for less than a minute. Uh, so again, not uh, not something that did a lot of damage. It blew around a couple of blew around some garbage cans, knocked over a basketball hoop. That's about it. But it sure was exciting for the folks who got to see this, like Emily Marie Giles up in the center and her five year old was very excited about it as well. So Again, uh, kind of the best kind of tornado, one that doesn't do any damage. You can see the rotation here. You can see some debris flying around there in the sky. So we definitely had all of those elements. And again, it looked like they touched down very briefly, less than a minute and no significant damage. In fact, really no damage being reported at all from this. It did show up ever so subtly on Doppler radar. See that little curl right there? That's the cell that cruised across the center that spawned that very, very weak tornado and all the shower activity now 
is dying down. In fact, when we zoom out, we've got some showers out of the gorge, parts of Skamania County, Eastern Clark County and up around Mountain Hood. But even there, it's greatly diminishing. In fact, most of the state is dry. Some showers over the Ochoco Highlands there in eastern Oregon. So we are on the front end of a drying spell, which is somewhat welcome after rain amounts like this. These are all mountainous locations. June Lake is up on the south side of Mount St. Helens. Nearly six inches of rain there. Cougar, Washington, just south of June Lake, over four inches of rain. Out in the Oregon coast range, the Nehalem River station showing 3.67. Up in the Bull Run watershed, over two inches and nearly two and a half inches down at Detroit Lake. So it was a very beneficial and significant rainfall over the last couple of days all around the northwest. What's coming up? Well, the legacy of all that rain is that there's a lot of moisture in the air. When the clouds clear tonight, fog will form very quickly. And the weekend is actually going to start a little bit wet with just some light showers. The question, of course, is, David, what about the eclipse and the weather for the eclipse in the southern part of Oregon? We'll dig into that. It may be looking a little bit better. Have the latest in a bit. Back to you. Oh, that's a tease there. Thanks so much, Matt. All right, let's get to an update now on the war between Israel and Hamas as the sun rises in the region on what is now Thursday morning. At least 24 Americans are now confirmed dead and dozens are still missing. Israel today formed a new unity government as the death toll from the unprecedented attacks inside Israel grew to some 1,200 Israelis. In Gaza, more than 1,100 have been killed. Meanwhile, Israeli troops are massing near the border for what could very well be a ground assault in one of the most densely populated areas on the planet. A team of U.S. military tech experts experienced in hostage recovery are also on the ground. This attack uh, was uh, a campaign of pure cruelty, not, not just hate, but pure cruelty against the Jewish people. Funding and resources for Israel cannot come without congressional approval. That's being tied up by the lack of a House speaker. Today, Republicans who control the House nominated Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise to be their candidate. Could take several votes over several days for the House to pick a new leader. And here in the Northwest, we heard from an active duty soldier in the Israeli military who was visiting family in Portland when Hamas attacked. Melina Suarez says she is planning to return to the region next week. She'll be taking along donations for fellow troops, things like deodorant, toothbrushes and socks to help them through the weeks ahead. Going into this, knowing that this is the reality, what I'm heading back to, I feel prepared. I feel ready mentally. I'm not scared because I know um, God has always been with me. My family is always praying for me. My community is always praying for me. Safe travels for details on some of the ways you can contribute through the Jewish Federation of Portland and others. You can head to our website, kgw.com. Now to a KGW investigation into some Tesla electric cars that could have a hidden and troubling flaw. It is called phantom braking, and in at least one case, it appears to have had deadly consequences. Here's part of the story from our investigative reporter, Kyle Iboshi. What you're about to see is a fatal crash after Tesla unexpectedly comes to a near stop on a Missouri freeway. Notice traffic whizzing by when suddenly the car is rear-ended. The phenomenon known as phantom braking has been documented in countless videos shared by Tesla owners. Their vehicles suddenly slam the brakes, often on open roadways. Oh, 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 oh. There we are. That was ridiculous. Dropping in speed in response to imagined hazards. Oh, you can see my foot. I'm not doing anything. I'm holding the wheel. I'm not doing anything. I'm on the highway. I'm on the highway. Are you seeing this? I'm on the highway. For the past few months, I've gone through thousands of federal auto safety complaints, spoken with more than 50 Tesla owners, and even tested the technology myself. What I found? Incidents of phantom braking are more widespread than previously reported because Tesla, along with federal auto safety regulators, haven't done much to warn them about it. I could have been killed. It was terrifying. In July, Kathy Kopacek took a road trip from Portland to northern Idaho. Midway through the eight-hour drive, her 2022 Tesla Model Y suddenly slammed on its brakes while in cruise control along an open stretch of interstate. And I thought, oh my gosh, 
What happened? Shaken, Kathy pulled over for a bit. She thought maybe it was a fluke until the same thing happened a few hours later, again at highway speeds. I mean, I was 70, 72 miles an hour, and it stopped fast. And everybody behind me was swerving, screeching. So you came to a dead stop? About 10 miles an hour. I think I went from 72 down to about 10, where I was barely crawling. So it's like there was something in front of you, and it said stop? Yes. I mean, it stopped so fast, it threw me forward. Tesla owners report these phantom braking incidents are typically triggered by false positives. Something is setting off the car's safety features. It would be like if I saw something in the road and I I stopped as fast as I could. It was that type of stop. Wow, that is just the first couple of minutes of Kyle's in-depth investigation. He also rented a Tesla. You can see what happened to him on a stretch of Oregon Interstate. Plus, what safety experts in Tesla are saying or not saying about phantom braking. You can check out the full story. It's up right now at KGW.com. You, of course, are watching KGW News on this Wednesday. Straight ahead at 11, cable company controversy. Why a team some say should be working to woo the fans is now getting more expensive to watch. Plus, we have a winner where the winning ticket in a $1.7 billion Powerball jackpot was sold.